Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Inkscape to create a lino cut look. I'll be using basic shapes, blend modes, the pencil tool and the node tool. Let's have a look at the setup. There is a background layer with a paper texture and a color overlay. A shape layer with the silhouette. It's made up of basic shapes, rectangles, circles, a triangle and lines for the feet. On top of that sits a layer called lines. This is where the elements that are cut out of the silhouette will go. I created a few basic shapes that I will use as patterns for the pencil tool. I select the shape and copy it with Ctrl C. The pencil tool has the shape option from clipboard. If I use that and draw a line, it will have the three lines of the pass I copied into the clipboard. When I select another shape, copy it and draw the line with the pencil tool, it will stretch that shape along the length of the pass. The orientation of these shapes matters. Take for example the circle and rotate them. The pattern I get when I draw with it is a very different one. I start by turning all the brush shapes to a white fill. That is important because I'm going to use a multiply on the design layer which will render everything inside the design layer that is white and that includes the lines layer not visible. With the blue shape below, the white will cut out the parts of the blue shape that are covered and show the background, rendering that area transparent. I copy the pointy shape, use the pencil tool and draw the first line. That was not the best line. Let's zoom in and try again. When working with the pen tool, it can help to zoom in. That gives you a larger area for a more fluid stroke. The advantage of working with the pencil tool is it is a vector shape. I can easily modify the line. With this one being a crucial line, I use the node tool and adjust it to have a really nice and smooth line. Working with multiple layers, it helps to pay attention what layer you're actually working in. I put the line where my brush patterns are. It should have been in the lines layer inside the design layer. And as I mentioned earlier, it renders it invisible because I did not put the shape inside the design layer either. Once I place the blue shape layer inside the design layer, the line appears. It's cut out of the silhouette showing the background below. The same happens when I add a circle for the eye. The white fill will render the circle invisible. In this case, I don't want a white fill. I want a stroke. I turn the fill off and give the circle a stroke instead and adjust the widths. To draw the feathers and the highlights, I select the pointy shape. Copy it, use the pencil tool and start drawing lines around the eye. The result is a rather wide stroke. I could now pick a different pattern I created earlier and draw with that one or I can use the scale, give it half the size and use the scaling to adjust the width of my stroke. I keep adding lines following the shape of the bird. And the result is instantly visible. The very clean vector silhouette is already broken and shows some kind of furry fluffiness. When doing feathers or fur, avoid too even lines and too repetitive patterns. Variation and unevenness makes it look more natural. I adjust the scale to get a thicker line for the lightest areas.
For even finer lines, I set the scale to 0.25 and use the thinner lines to blend by going from longer lines closer together to shorter and more scattered lines, I can create some sort of shading. I recorded this tutorial using my graphic tablet, which makes it easier, but it can also be done with the mouse. You use the pen tool rather than the pencil tool, the note tool to curve, work with clusters of lines and duplicate them into different spots. As you might have noticed in the beginning, my hands are shaky at the best of times and the lines aren't always that straight. It helps to turn on the smoothing and ramp it all the way up to create cleaner lines with less notes. I zoom out a lot. It's helpful to see the progress but also prevents me from drawing lines that are just too tiny to be visible. Working with vectors and having the ability to nearly infinitely zoom in, it's very easy to get lost in detail. For now that's all the lines I need. I want to add a second color. I created a duplicate of the silhouette, set it to black, placed it inside its own layer, again set to multiply with a lines layer on top. Whatever I place in here that is white will cut and display the blue below. I scale up the stroke using a rather wide line. That way I can erase a lot of the black and display the blue below. I adjust the scale and change back to a thinner stroke that allows me to blend between the black and the blue. I use the same method as before, placing longer strokes densely together and shorter strokes scattered wider apart to shade between the black and the blue. What looks like a lot of work definitely is worth it, the variation and the detail pay off. It's a lot of fun seeing simple lines transform the silhouette into something very different. As usual, while recording, I got a little carried away and did not try the different brushes I wanted to use in this video. Let's change the shape now for the highlight in the eye and the pattern in the wings. Select the shape, copy, go back to the pencil tool and draw in the right layer. I was in the wrong layer again. I place it in the right layer, place an additional line there and then add the pattern to the wings with the double line. In order to get these lines a little bit more even, I use the note tool, delete some of the notes and adjust the curves. A little bit of highlight on the beak and I think I can call this one done. Looking at it, I think it's time for a little bit of a cheat. There's too much blue and not enough black for the shading. So I color one of the shapes black, copy it, use the pencil tool and draw with a thin black line to add a bit more detail to the feathers. Seeing all these lines are vector lines, it's easy to adjust them with the note tool, lengthen, curve or delete some of them completely. 
You can also scale a stroke with the node tool. There's an additional handle that allows you to increase the scale and widen a stroke. In order not to bore you too much because it is very repetitive, I did speed up the video. With all the little stuff ups, it took roughly 30 minutes to create this bird. Even though this technique lends itself to something furry or fluffy, you're not limited to those topics. You can use it with lines or shapes for highlights, patterns or textures. I created these designs using Affinity Designer. It is a different approach, a different set of tools and the vector brushes are more limited. You end up using textured brushes which are bitmaps mixed into the vector designs. I prefer the clean vector approach in Inkscape. It's very easy to create your own vector shapes, copy them to the clipboard and use them with the pencil tool. I'll definitely play around with the shapes I've created a little bit more, see how they work with the pencil tool, optimize them and maybe record another video dedicated to the pencil tool. In this video, I used basic shapes, the different blend modes, the pencil tool and the node tool to create a lino cut effect in Inkscape. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like and let me know in the comments below what you think and want to see on this channel. And I will see you again soon.